All right. So now you've probably done some labor economics courses. You've probably studied a little bit the labor market. Um, and uh, in a typical labor market model, how how does uh, how do we expect the labor market to work? So if you've if you've studied uh, labor markets before, if you've done some microeconomics. I guess the way that the labor market, or in fact any market, is represented is as follows. Um, so you'll have always a price on the uh, y-axis, and then you'll have a quantity on the x-axis. Right. Um, so here, in the case of the labor market, you'll have a wage, um, and here you'll have labor. On the x-axis, right, and um, usually you have supply, you have a demand. Um, so the so labor supply is going to be usually an increasing function of the wage, and then you have a labor demand that's a decreasing function of the wage, something like this, right, and. Right, and so, uh, you know, because in any market, you know, when you study market, usually you have demand, you have a supply, it's a competitive setup, uh, and so you're going to have uh, an equilibrium. And so your equilibrium is going to be at the intersection of your supply and your demand, right? And so uh, your equilibrium is going to give, give you a quantity of labor that we can call a star, and the equilibrium is also going to give you a wage that we can call W star, okay? Where supply is equal to demand. And the idea is that, you know, people uh, supply their labor, firms want to uh, hire some labor, and you have some kind of auction and kind of going on in the, in the background. Um, and at the end, you know, your market has to be in equilibrium, where supply is equal to demand at the given wage. You have a wage that's going to set up until supply is equal to demand. Um, and the idea, the story that we tell behind this type of mechanism is that if you have a wage that's above W star, then basically um, you have more people, say you're somewhere here. If you were here, what you would have is that you'd have more people who want to work at that wage um, than currently have a job. And so the people who want to work, they would lower the wage that they require, and your wage would at the end fall until you get to your equilibrium. Okay, because people will be able to beat down the wage, uh, all the people who want to work at that wage, until you get to your equilibrium at that point. If, on the other hand, your wage was too low, something like this, so here what would happen is that you would have firms would be willing to hire more workers than people are willing to work. And so firms, when they realize that they are not able to have enough workers, they would offer higher wages, your wage would go up until you get to the equilibrium here. Okay, so this is usually the story we tell behind the competitive equilibrium. Um, so at the end, we're always at a point where supply is equal to demand. And what do we have here? Well, the key property here is that your unemployment is always zero. There is no unemployment in these types of model, right? Because you're always uh, at this equilibrium. And so, of course, that's <laughs> very problematic um, to study unemployment. So we have to move completely away from that competitive um, paradigm with supply and demand that are always equalized uh, with, um, with the wage. We have to develop a new way of thinking about markets. And in fact, what the way that we're going to develop is a generalization uh, of that competitive um, paradigm where we'll keep the wage, of course, and we will introduce a new variable um, that we call the tightness. And that's going to allow us, that will generalize these graphs that I show you here. Uh, in a sense, we'll make that graph, which is two-dimensional, three-dimensional, and will uh, allow you to think uh, 
uh, is going to allow you to think about having unemployment in a proper uh, economic, macroeconomic equilibrium. So if you want, we're going to, uh, we're going to add a new axis in the background like this, and we're going to work with uh, three-dimensional uh, three-dimensional markets and the new your new variable is going to be uh, the tightness in the background okay so to be able to do that we need to uh, look a little bit at the data we need to look at how the labor market works in reality uh, to try to figure out how we can move away from that competitive paradigm um, and develop uh, and develop a new apparatus to think about uh, unemployment. 